right here to the book of uh, James and it's chapter 4 and I'm going to cover quite a bit of territory here chapter 4 and I'll begin reading at verse 6 but he gives more grace wherefore he said God resist the proud but give grace unto the humble submit yourselves therefore to God Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted in mourning, weep, and let your laughing be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of God, of the Lord, and he will lift you up. From Thessalonians 5.16 Rejoice evermore, pray without season, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the Spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast all things, abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be reserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. Jesus Christ. Favor is He that calls you and who also will do it. Holy Father, I thank You for this Word. In the name of Jesus, hide it in my heart that I'll not sin against You. Strengthen me. Keep my eyes upon the King. <coughs> Always. Help me to follow in the right paths. Do the right thing. Help me to bear my cross and your cross. And Jesus, you said there's a spirit in man, the inspiration, the Almighty, that knows all things. Put it in me always. Amen. Now, I'm going to speak to you tonight on resist the devil. Resist the devil. And he'll flee from you. And you're going to know who the devil is before I leave here. I can't ever remember preaching this in this respect. But God has given me a, a vision of redemption. Christ has redeemed us, Galatians says, from the curse of the law. We are... Set free. John tells us in both 8 and 12, John says that if the truth makes you free, you're free indeed. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Now, how can you be free indeed and still be bound? We're not just talking about bound in the Spirit. Now I want you to notice, when Jesus came to the pool of Bethesda, the Bible said that He walked around the crowd. I don't think He just walked up there and just moved on impulse. Do you? I don't believe He ever moved just on impulse. I believe He moved on by the inspiration the Bible said there's a spirit in man, the inspiration of the Almighty, that tells him what to do. Shows him, gives him wisdom what to do. And if we'll seek for that wisdom, and Jesus walked up to the pool of Bethesda, and I believe with all my heart that He just walked around in the midst of all that bunch of cripples, blind, lame, half, and withered, and he just walked around through the congregation. And just looking down, this one, that one, just, you know. The Lord told me to go down to Warm Springs back during the time of the polio epidemic in the 50s and said, why don't you go down there and just walk among them. And he got them all over the place in Springs, got them out in sun porches and everything. And I went down there I didn't know what he was sending me down there for. It was 1954. 
I went down there just walking around. And after a while, the Lord said, Is it nothing to you? I said, Does this bring back remembrance? Can you remember when you was a cripple in a crippled children's hospital? How that I came and raised you up, gave you a miracle of healing? I said, I've called you to raise these people up. I said, It's time for you to go into healing ministry. I said, Is it nothing to you? And I started squalling. And from that time, the Lord led me to start fasting and praying and started preparing myself to go into the healing ministry. Well, Jesus walked among them cripples. And all of a sudden, He looked at a man and He said, Will thou, will you be made whole? The man looked up at Him and said, knowing that He was a long time laying on that bed, had a little blanket there of a thing that He was laying on, you know, a little uh, lay bed. I'm not talking about a king size bed. I'm talking about he's laying on a little made bed. You know, you have a little bed, like a beach bed, towel bed. And he was laying on that bed. And Jesus said, knowing they'd been a long time laying on that bed, said, Will you be made whole? And the man said, I have no man. Jesus said, Arise. And take up your bed and walk. You know that same Jesus is saying to you tonight, Will thou or will you be made whole? And every one of us, somewhere or another, we, 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 we get bound, we get laying on a bed. The devil's got us laying on a bed somewhere. Every one of us gets down once in a while. I'm not going to tell you I ain't never been down. I've been down. And you've been down. That's why we shouldn't down a man that's down. Because we all get down once in a while. The greatest of Christians gets down. And a man that tells you he never gets down, there's something wrong with him. I'm not talking about backsliding. I'm not talking about throwing your hands up. I'm talking about there's times that people get down. I mean, you know, you get down financially. Man, that's just down. <laughs> I mean, just getting down financially, that's down. Yeah. How many have been, look at me like when I talk about being down. How many have been down financially? And a dollar would make you feel pretty good. <laughs> Well, recently a, a brother told me, he said, are you eating? I said, well, I'm eating salad. I'm not eating no solid food, just salad. He said, let's go get a salad. I said, well, I said, uh, you have to pay for it. <laughs> Hallelujah! That ain't been too long ago. Amen! And I'm talking about, uh, I won't touch God's money. I had some of God's money, but it ain't my money. When, when I, I don't care if I got God's money. If, if That ain't my money. I'm still broke. Because God's money is God's money. God's money ain't my money. My money is my money. And God's money is His money. One time, the Internal Revenue guy was looking at my briefcase, and I had a thing there to pout, and he looked in it, and he said, God's money. And then the little, little cow said, My money. He said, What's this year? <laughs> I said, My money. He said, Who does? That's God's money. He said, What's the difference? I said, Well, that belongs to God. Ain't mine. I said, that goes to the church and to pay these revivals. Not a little bit tired of mine. Hallelujah. Glory. I said, God richer than me. <laughs> Praise God. Say amen. Hallelujah. But we all go through it. We have to get up. Well, this man was down. But I want you to know there's a man called Jesus. If you pay attention to him, he'll get you going. He'll get you up. But you got to do something. The first thing he told that man when he was down to rise up. Some of you, you want to get back on your feet, but you don't want to rise up first. You don't want to resist the devil. You got to resist being broke. You got to resist sickness. You got to resist sickness as though it was Satan himself. You got to resist diseases. You can't heal if you have a pain in your chest. 
I've never understood how people can trust God with their body. Put their, I mean, their soul, I mean, put their soul in God's hand and can't put their body in God's hand. If I can trust Jesus with my soul, I'm sure He can take care of my body. Some folks try to rise up in their soul, but they never rise up in their body. You know, a man is made up of soul or spirit. Soul, spirit, and body. Your mind is your spirit. Your mind is what connects your soul, your body together. It's what brings you together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your spirit, your spirit mind is what connects you to your body. And you got to rise up in your spirit. When the devil gets your spirit down, you're down. You know you can get your spirit lifted up and you feel all together a different person. But you can get your spirit down and you have somebody hurt your spirit and you get so wounded that you down. You gotta get your spirit up. You want God to move for you, but you gotta rise up. You gotta rise up within yourself. You gotta say, Look, Jesus, I'm down, but I'm coming up. I'm getting off of this bed. I'm getting off of this town. You don't take your bed up first, you rise up first. Some folks want to count your money first, but you got to rise up first. Some folks want to get up and walk first. You don't get up and walk first. You got to rise first. Rise up. Rise up. And then walk. Rise up. Take up your bed. You first got to rise up, and then you got to take yourself up. You got to get up and get that bed out of the way. And know that the devil use it to throw you back down on it. Get it on your back before it gets you, you back down on it. See, he wants you whole. Not just in soul. Soul, mind, and body. See, he heals the whole man. Being whole means will thou be made whole. Will you be made whole? Do you want to be well? Do you want to be well? Then you got to rise up. And I'll tell you something about that old bed we laying on. You get used to it. Do you know right now, the best of you, the most helpless of you, can go in your house and lay down in the bed. You know that woman there we went and seen? She wasn't crippled. But she got crippled, didn't she? She laid in that bed, wouldn't get out of that bed. She got down. She didn't get down physically. She got down in her mind. Her body, her, her mind got her down. Her spirit. Right down in Anderson. Had a big church at one time. And lay right there in that bed till the devil tore it up. Tore it, slapped up. Wouldn't come out of that room. Become stiff-legged. Couldn't raise her hand. Couldn't bend, bend her legs. Her, ne her, her legs glued together. She, she become a cripple. She perished. Her arms drawed. She was a well woman, but the devil got her down. Uh, the Bible said, you gotta resist the devil. Some of you, you, if the devil comes say, go get drunk, you said you crazy. Some of you, Women, some nice looking man come by and the devil said, look at him. Put your eyes on him. You look at him, you know, and the devil said, well, when you like to have, and you said, you're crazy, devil. He's married, I'm married, I don't want him, you're crazy. See, you got to resist. You men see a woman come by and you're just about to get a cricket and they come turn and wreck the road. <laughs> looking. Looking. 
Somebody said, well, I'm going to get me a look anyhow. <laughs> By that one of you, get you a look. <laughs> Ain't that right? You get you a look. <laughs> a quick look. And you got to resist it. You got to say, devil, you're lying. I don't know that person. I'm married. You resist it. You're crazy. The devil come and tell you, you get mad, and the devil's I'll just kill him. Get me a knife. Some of you women, your husband, make you mad. So I'll stick him with a knife while he's asleep. <laughs> You know, good and well, everybody at one point of life have been mad enough to kill somebody. Ain't a person here that somewhere or another, you ain't been mad enough at, at one point to kill somebody. I have and you have. Every one of us have been out angry for on a spur of a moment, we could have killed somebody, but you got to resist it. He said, you're crazy, I ain't killing nobody. If you yield to that spirit, you'd go kill somebody. The ones that goes does it, they do it because they don't resist. You resist it because you know it's wrong and you go to hell. Well, did you know that cancer is wrong? You know that arthritis is wrong? That high blood pressure is wrong? You know that high blood pressure is the devil too? You say, well, if I go kill somebody, put me in an electric chair. Let me tell you, somebody arthritis is going to kill you. That heart trouble is going to kill you. Some of you don't know it's your own death row right now. Jesus told me, He said, My people, many of them sitting on death row, said they're in prisons with stained glass windows. These churches is nothing but a prison with stained glass windows, and you know it. These churches and pastors has got people down. It's time to stand up. Amen. Rise up. It's time to get off of the bed and rise up in your heart. Rise up in your spirit. When you heal your damn feeling, you got to resist the devil. Some people wonder why I'm having the revivals I'm having this year. I'm preaching Jesus and I'm resisting the devil. I'm resisting all this chaos and all this scandal and all this mess that's rose up against the church. I'm standing up and saying, God, Jesus Christ is real in the hell. Jesus is real in the world. He's real anyway. You gotta rise up. About Wednesday, Thursday, I was at work at the at the uh, garage, and the telephone rang. The boss come around and said they want you down at the office. Down at the personnel office. I said, yeah, I'm, go I'm fixing to go home. He said, what? And I thought you were going to be here a while. I said, no, I'm fixing to go home. They're going to tell me I'm going home. I went down there. Might have been on Tuesday. As you'll be leaving next Tuesday. It's 6.30. So get everything ready. As I've been ready. I go home this Tuesday. <laughs> Hallelujah, I don't have to get ready. I'm ready right now. <laughs> Glory. Well, Scott came up. I called Scott and told him to come. I said, get me a place down in Austin quick. Rent me a building. The biggest building you can find. And ask Brother Barron if he would help raise the first month's rent if he would. And nobody's no down and I was. I'm talking about here I've made it on fourteen dollars a week. All they let us spend. Man, I can out here I can spend that one stop. <laughs> How many you spend it at one stop? I can spend that at one stop, Brother Kent. And here, that's gotta last me a week. Can you imagine fourteen dollars last me a week? And so uh, 
I mean, you can't get no down in that. I mean, you know, I, I, I tell you one thing. I was so broke that I couldn't pay attention, much less pay my bills. How <laughs> many of you have ever been so broke you couldn't pay attention? <laughs> now, I tell you, that's broke when you can't pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you have ever been broke and you couldn't pay attention? And you know you pay attention when you can't pay nothing. But when you can't pay attention, you you further and broke. People talking about they couldn't touch bottom. I mean, they're going bottom. I'm below bottom. I couldn't touch bottom. You ever reached out and couldn't even find bottom? Then the word bottom was. Then the word indie. Well, I got everything ready. And so I left, and they told me, said, uh, they'll give you a bus ticket, and $50 or so. Well, I went to the chapel. I said, Lord, uh, $50 or so of what they're going to give me. I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give that to you Saturday. And that first offer, because I want back on, I want to get up, I'm down. You know, the, the one thing about it, you don't, the symptoms, you don't deny that they're there, but you don't run around confessing them all the time. You start confessing Jesus. See, you, you can just run around confessing your symptoms. You can just run around broke and broke and broke and broke and broke. Realize you're broke and then start confessing them. I'm going to get welded back together. I'm going to get back on my feet. Realize, you, you, you admit, you say, yeah, you know the symptoms of it. You don't confess your symptoms. You confess that by His stripes I'm healed. By His grace all my needs are supplied. My God said, my God shall supply all my needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Quote it, say it to God. Always remember it. You admit you need help. You admit, but you don't run around confessing I'm broke all the time. I'm down all the time. You know you're down. Admit you're down. Admit you're a sinner. Admit you're sick. But you don't run around as you admit you're a sinner and just stay a sinner all the time. If you do, you'll be a sinner. You said, I'm a sinner, but thank God by the grace of God, I'm going to be saved. By the blood of Jesus, I'm going to be saved. I'm sick, but by the stripes of Jesus, I'm going to be healed. Hallelujah. And just like when you were just sinner, you said, I'm a sinner, I'm going to hell, but I'm going to get saved. Lord, I'm sick, and by the stripes of Jesus, I'm going to be healed. Through Jesus Christ, all of my needs is going to be supplied. I'm going to tell you, that devil can't keep you down. Jesus will get you up. I said, Jesus will get you up. Up, 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 up. Do you hear me? I said, Jesus will get you up. Well, so I went to the chapel and I pledged that what they'd give me to God. I said, Jesus, I don't know what they're going to give me. I didn't care if it didn't give me nothing, but since it's going to give it to me anyway, I said, Lord, don't forget to bring me some hatches tomorrow night. I said, Lord, have what to give me. I'm going to give it in that first offer because i got to get back up. I'm down. But I'm going to get up. Now listen. I'm sure where the devil. I hadn't preached except here the weekend after my mother, the Saturday morning, after my mother's funeral. And I've talked a couple of times in jail, but you know, I'm talking about getting like this. And that wasn't no preach that Saturday morning. I'm, in, I'm incarcerated. So you might say I haven't preached in two years. And so I, did, I, I knew I had to start preaching. I keep this set around. As far as I'm concerned, I don't care whether I ever preach again. I just want to get out and be a Christian, go on the ranch and learn to survive. But I know I've got a job to do. I know that the Lord had not cast me away because I've been to jail. See, the Lord don't uncall you because you go through some tribulation. 
You go through some crisis of your life. See, the Lord don't uncall you because you have a long spell of sickness or you go through a bad, dry spell of finances or, or you go through a family problem. You have a bust up of family or maybe you lose a, a loved one or, or you have a disaster and, and you have to bankrupt and, and file chapter what? 13? See, you, you don't just throw your hands up and quit God because all these things happen to you. You've got to pick up the pieces. Yeah, you go through that down state of your life. But you've got to realize you're still alive. You ain't going to kill yourself. You've got to survive. You've got to occupy till He come. And you still got the gift and the call of God upon your life. Yes, you had an operation. Yes, you went through a storm. Yes, you've been through the crisis. But you ain't going to live that. You ain't going to part here. The Lord told me one time, said, don't part by your failures. Don't part by when you make a mistake. Don't part by them. Get up and repent of it and go on. See, that's what's the matter with some people. They part by their failures. You don't throw your hands up. Go off the field because of what happened to us in Tampa last week. Uh-uh. Did you never get nothing done for God? Man, I've seen the time I walked out of town. I hitched out of town. I hitchhiked out of Houston to Chattanooga. But I didn't quit. I didn't get discouraged. See, Jesus said, will you be made whole? He said, rise up. you got to rise up. You can't lay on that bed where you at. you got to first get up off of it. Don't try to start taking a bed up while you're on it. Some of you right now are trying to take that bed up and you're laying on it. Get off of it. You ought to rise up to get off of it. You don't get out of bed as long as you keep laying down. Every morning you got to rise up. No matter how good you feel or how bad you feel, you got to say, i got to get up. You set the clock for another hour, but still an hour, now you got to get up. How many just have put it off to the last minute? But you say, I gotta get out of this bed. Well, you gotta get out of that mess. And the quicker you resist the devil, the quicker you stand up, the quicker you get off the bed, but off you're gonna be, as quick as you stop that thing that's in your body, the quick as you stand up against that heart trouble, you stand up against that high blood pressure, you stand up against that cancer, you stand up against that financial devil, the quicker you stand up against the devil that's fighting you, the quicker you resist the devil is the last power he's gonna have against you. See, when you stand up to the devil, that weakens him. It weakens him. It weakens your case when you stand up. It weakens your case when you fight back, when you stand up and say, Look, yes, I've been down. 38 years I've been down on this bed. The man up there looking at me is telling me to get up. And I'm getting up right now. I'm getting off of this thing. He asked me, he told me I could be made whole. But I can't be made whole laying here. I can't be financially whole. I can't be physically whole. I can't be spiritually whole. As long as I lay here, i got to rise up. And then he said, take us. This is a preach. Take up your bed. Then he said, you got to take it by step. You can't do it all at once. See, many times we want to do everything at once. First, you got to rise up. Second, you got to take, take up. And it was a, a pallet, what it was. Take up. Take up. Well, he reached down and got his bed. Got his pad. Throw it on his shoulder. And the next thing, he said, now, Walk. See, you walk by faith and not by sight. Now walk. The just shall live by faith. You don't walk by sight, you walk by faith. The man don't say, well, I've got up now. I've got the bed on me. I've took my bed up. But I ain't walking 38 years. If I can rise up, he got his spirit up first. Everybody's on that bed. Everybody's crippled. The devil has crippled everybody. You crippled somewhere or the Lord told me today, said all of my people and my preachers and my church have been crippled in some way and said you got to go out there and get them to tell them like I told them to rise up. Then you got to tell them to take the bed up. Then you got to tell them to, to walk. He said you got to tell them to walk. It's time to walk. It's time to walk. 
It's time to get off the bed. It's time to get the bed taken up. And now walk, 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 walk. You got to walk. See, that devil don't want you to walk. He wants you to stay. If you do get off your bed, he wants you to look at it. If you lay that bed there, next thing you're going to be... You ever see them? I see them all the time. I get them off the bed, but I can't get them to take the bed up. Next thing you know, they're right back in the same mess. Same mess it was. Same mess. Same mess. Pull them out every month. Pull them out every year. Some of these preachers, i got to pull them out every year. They never get up. They'll get up as quick as I leave. They lay back down. But the Lord told me, said, what's wrong with you? You don't ever get them to take the bed up. I said, tell them to walk before you leave them. Have them walking. I said, don't leave them by the bed. Get them going. Get them going. you got to get them going. Jesus will get you going. you got to get them going. This is the time to get going for Jesus. To resist the devil. To cleanse our hearts. To look up in Jesus. He'll find a double line. Put our faith in a living Savior. He'll get you going. You can rise again. You can be successful again. Brother Crawford, you can stand up before them ruptures and cancers and tumors, ball your fists up again and hit them in the stomach like you used to. See, there's something happens to us. I don't know what it is. Ever what we go through, it does something to us. And you've got to rise up from it. You can't live where you are. You've got to say, that's past. Yes, I went through a crisis. Yes, I was sick. If you were sick. Yes, the devil attacked me. Yes, I wound up with something I didn't want. Yes, I got myself in a mess. But I'm rising up. I'm taking my bed up. And now, I'm going to walk again. We, I used to walk. We used to walk. We're going to walk again. We're going to run again. We're going to be on top again. And here it is from Tuesday to Saturday. It seemed like I can't wait. But Saturday morning, I got over about 8 o'clock, started praying. Sister Bonnie, she got up with me. Randall was there and Brother Oni. And three or four more others. I hadn't met Brother Oni, but I'd met him on. He, he was there when I got off the bus station. Waiting at the building to church. But then I got shaky. Before God, I'm telling you like I ain't never told it before. I didn't want to go out. I, I, there when I looked out there and saw six or seven hundred people. All of a sudden I got scared. I ain't preached in two years. I don't know what to do. I don't know what they're going to think. And I told Sister Bunny, I said, I, I can't go out there. I can't. I ain't ready yet. She said, "You'll never be ready." I said, "It's now or never." I said, "Well, it just has to be never." I said, <laughs> "I said, I ain't ready yet. Ever, I ain't ready yet." And every time I'd have a dream about preaching, I wouldn't have my shoes on, my coat, or my shirt. You know, sometimes the devil will give you dreams. He'll give you every old failing dream in the world. He'll make you think that you ain't fit. He'll make you think that they ain't going to believe you no more. He'll make you think it's over for you. He'll make you think it's going to die. But you got to rise up. See, I'm off the bed. I've got the bed on me, Brother Comfort. And I'm standing here ready to walk. And I'm scared to. Hey, man, you know how it is? Some of you have been on that bed so long, you're afraid your balance is going to be off. You're going to stagger. you got to say, Lord, yes, I've been down 40 years. Yes, I've been down two years. This man's been down 38 years. Some of you have been down 15. Some of you have been down six months. Some of you have been down 10 years. But you're still going to walk. You're still going to walk. I said you're still going to walk. You're still going to walk. Hallelujah. You're coming back to the top. You said, how? Because Jesus is going to get you up. Jesus is going to get you walking. You 
you're going to walk again, saints. This church, I prophesy, this church is going to be filled again. This church is going to walk again. This church is going to be packed out again. I prophesy, Brother Crawford, your ministry is going to have 7,000 again. You're going to have 5,000 again. Brother Ford, I prophesy that you're going to be as dedicated as you ever are. I prophesy to you that you're going to get going. You're going to get back out on it. And you're going to be greater. Because now you've been through something. Now you've been through the fire. You know what it is to be down. See, a man that's been down, he can help folks. Man that's been down, he can't help folks. He understands other folks. See, I've got an understanding I didn't have before I was on that bed. Suffering gives you compassion. Suffering gives you understanding to the other fella. It makes you have compassion on somebody else that's going through it. When you when you never been through nothing, you think ain't nobody else been through something. That everybody's been through something's backslid. That everybody's been through something to sin. That everybody's been through something has done something wrong. Uh -uh. I'll tell you why. The devil is a lie. He jumps on people. He's a roaring lion. Seeking who he made a vow. You gotta resist him. You gotta stand up to him. You gotta fight him. I ain't staying down no more. I prophesied at my meetings. The kind of money I had in my meeting before I went to jail, I'm going to put it back in them. I'm going to have a kind of crowd. Hallelujah. But I peep. You know, sometimes we all ought to peep. Peeping gets you in trouble. Peeping gets you in trouble. You don't need to peep at your doubts. You don't need to peep at your failures. I opened that door and I cracked it and I seen there wasn't no room for nobody to stand. Scott said, we've got all the chairs out and much as a fire marshal of lettuce and said, to get a permit, you know, they told him how many we'd have a seat. They ain't got no more room. I said, I got some chairs. They got about 300 back there. I said, go ahead and put them up. Yes, sir. But I don't really, and I still, you know, I peeped. Sister, I told Sister Money, I said, I ain't no way, I'll just become shaky. On what it is when you start to take that step of faith. Even after you got your bed on you, know you've done got up. Ready to walk now. You don't watch it. You can lose faith, spread your bed back down. Right back down and right back down your same mess. Lay right back down in it. Some people vomit and lay down in it. Don't they? The Bible says like a dog with his own vomit in it. Get right back in water and like a sour water in the mud. Don't watch you take a good bath and wash your car. And then why, why wash your car and split right back through the mud hole? You ever wash your car and somebody's come out and splatter it and just aggravates you? You ever had somebody get in your car and you just watched it just run right through the mud hole and could have went around it? I mean the tracks, you've seen others went around it. And some people, they just run right through it. And there's some tracks over there. Someone looks like, like the splash. Well, I'm tired of splashing. Too hard to clean up. It's too hard to clean up. Why get lay back down when you know you're up now? At least that's more you've been. You've been down 38 years. Been down five. At least you're on your feet. Don't that tell you something? You're on your feet now. At least you've been on the bed for 38 years. At least you got your bed on you. You got your troubles on your back now. You're off your troubles and your troubles is on you. Hallelujah. At least you're ready to walk. And I told her, I said, ain't no way. She said, I'm fixing to turn it to me. She said, I'm going out there in the morning. Take the service and said, I ain't going to keep it but a little while. I said, it's all right. <laughs> keep it as long as you want to. <laughs> I 
As if, you, if, if the Lord gives it to you, go ahead. He gives you the message. I'll take it tonight. Uh, if you don't walk now while you're standing by your bed and got your bed, you ain't going to walk. You don't wait till tomorrow. You don't wait till some other time. You feel like fasting, you fast then. When faith arrives, you don't wait till the next day. You start right now. Jesus, the man that said, well, look, Jesus, I'll wait for the next time you pass. Uh-uh. He'd been there. Nobody's helped. This is the only man that's offered to help him. Jesus is offering us some help now. Ain't nobody else offered to help me and you. Everybody else, every time they've seen us down, they come on and throw stones at us. Talk about us for being down. Everybody else ain't done nothing but lie on us. This is the only true man that's ever come by that's offered me any help. Nobody tried to help the lame man. Peter said, sit and don't have thy none, but said, he give him a hand. He said, rise up. See, the lame man had to rise up. He took him by the hand and said, rise up and walk. Jesus has got him up. Got his bed on him. He said, now walk. And after a while, that old boy, he looked at Jesus and he looked at his stiff joints. He looked at himself and said, well, at least this is the first time I've been on my feet in 38 years. See, the main thing is right here. Three, three, see, you're made up of your soul, your mind, and your body. Your body is one that's in trouble, see. Your body's crippled, but your mind is your go-between. Your mind is what contacts your soul with your body. It contacts you with God. Your mind. A lot of folks say it's all mine. It ain't all mine. Your mind has got to contact, got to, to emerge, have got to bring you together. And brother, I want you to know he rose up. You got you to walk in your mind first. Your body ain't going to walk first. See, you want your body, you want your symptoms to go away before you say, I'm healed. Ain't the way it comes. You're going to walk first. See, you want, to, you want a pile of money before you can thank God for supply. You're going to take a step of faith. Sister Bunny said, I'm going out there. And said, I ain't going to hold it long. He said, I'm going to sing the old rugged cross. And said, I'm turning to you. She sung the old rugged cross. She said, we want to turn the service to Brother Turtle, our champion. And to what she said? The people started clapping and they clapped and they clapped. And I, I just couldn't go out. Randall was behind. Randall pushed me. Randall said, go on, Daddy. <laughs> said, go on. And Sister Bunny said, Randall, you stay here with him. Don't you let him leave. Because I was nervous, folks. I mean, I'm frightened. I just got out of jail. And you, you didn't stay in that place. That's why, you know, we don't realize folks have been on that bed so long. People have been going through hell. And need somebody to round them. We, we, we've had enough knocks and kicks and criticism. This church has been talked about enough. Don't you knock it no more. Quit knocking this tabernacle. Quit knocking by the hand. Quit knocking this church. Quit knocking by the Ford. For the Ford, you've been through enough. You don't need to be knocked anymore. For the Ford, you've been through enough. You don't need nobody else to knock you. Let's quit knocking, folks. For God's sake, let's realize that we are a body. We're the body of Christ. We're brothers and sisters, and we need each other. Quit talking about one another. And I walked out there and I took that microphone. The moment I took it, I started crying. And I preached on that morning. I, I said, I'm going to read one scripture. Jesus has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Hallelujah. You've got to remember that. That's what He's come to do. He's just saving this man. He's saving me. This ain't the end of the world. Mama dies. Sister dies. Husband runs off. Wife runs off. Thank you. You still got to live. They don't want you. You can't run around groaning the rest of your life over a broken heart. You gotta pick up the pieces. You can't make a woman live with you won't live with you. You can't make a man live with you won't want you.
So what's the matter with us now? We try to make folks live with folks that don't want them. We try to make folks do what they don't want to do. You gotta realize that you got to live. And you got a future. You ain't gonna blow your brains out. You done thought that over and you didn't. <laughs> I done thought that over. And I, I, I passed that and God, I believe in hell myself. And I believe as you hear after, don't you? You done thought that over and you said, boy, there's a hell. And I sure don't want to spend the rest of eternity in hell for blowing my brains out. So you won that victory over that devil. So you know you ain't going to kill yourself. So what are you going to do? You're going to live till you die. And you're going to occupy. So you're going to walk. So I started walking. That's what you got to do there. You got to start walking. You got to say, Lord, I ain't going to stay here no more. I'm, I've been down, but I ain't down no more. I'm up now. I've been on that bed, but I got the bed on me. I ain't walking in, but right now I'm taking a step of faith. I'm taking a step of faith. I'm taking a step of faith. Hallelujah. And you won't walk three steps until Jesus will step in and he'll begin to move in you. Brother Crawford, the people came down and gave me $2,700. Love offer. And I didn't even ask for it. I was so frightened. They come down. This people just started coming up, handing me money, and just handing me money. They come down weeping and crying. Gave me $2,700. $2,700 in love offer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you something. The devil will tell you everybody's against you. Nobody cares. But what it is, see, we don't realize we ain't the only one been on the bed. Read, everybody's in the shape, and everybody's been on that bed. Just been a different bed. Some folks are on the king's side, and they don't want to get off of it. One thing about it, the bed I was on was a little prison bed. It was a little padded. It wasn't by, by the salt. I was glad to get off of that. Hey, Amen. Some of you, when you're on a bed of thorns, it's easy to get off. Some of your bed's been too easy laying around. You've had it too easy, but it's fixing to get rough. God told me the night's coming, and you're going to be in a mess. And I believe tonight that every single solitary one of you, if you make up your mind, Lord, I've been down as long as I'm going to stay down. Jesus has spoke to me tonight to rise up, take my bed up and walk, and I ain't staying here no more. I have sat here as long as I'm going to sit. I'm going to be in greater than I ever was, and you are too. I'm going to overcome my past. I'm going to overcome my present. And you're going to overcome your past. You're going to overcome your present. And you're going to have a future. Tell yourself, I'm going to overcome my past. I'm going to overcome my present. And I... Oh, 